Hey everyone, and welcome to today's uh, learning session. Uh, my name is Jason O'Dell. My website is luminescentphoto.com. You probably knew that, but I always have to say it at the beginning of these anyway. So thanks for attending today. And today I'm going to talk about uh, something I've been working on actually for quite a long time. I started a project a couple of years ago, um, and I just finished working on things in the last few months. And that's how to create vintage film looks directly in uh ACR Lightroom, so that's Adobe Camera Raw Lightroom. They're interchangeable, basically, in terms of the um, in terms of how they work. So I've got a few little slides just to keep me sort of organized, uh, and then the rest of the time I'll just be working a little bit in Lightroom. So it'll not be a long presentation, but uh, hopefully it will be informative, and you'll get some some um, information for your own image editing. So let me share my screen. So I've called this, for lack of a better description, vintage looks in ACR Lightroom. And um, that's what we'll be talking about today, getting those, those vintage looks. And my, my overview is real, real simple. Um, why you want to do it, the case, the, the argument, the case for it. Um, the, the choice between using third-party plugins or tools, uh, editors versus Camera Raw Lightroom. And then what goes into making these looks, uh, the components of, of the looks. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about in Lightroom specifically about presets versus profiles, because surprisingly, not everybody knows. Uh, maybe you've heard of presets, uh, but maybe you don't know about profiles. Or if you do, there's some interesting things that are in there that you can utilize. And then I will share um, some information about profiles and presets that I've spent the last uh, several months creating uh, so that I have one-click vintage looks directly in Lightroom. So there is an argument, of course, for, for vintage looks. I mean, this has been going on forever. Uh, as soon as digital came out, people were saying, hey, we want to make our digital files look like film. And a lot of that was because people didn't know we didn't have a lot of good processing tools and and it seemed like digital images were flat they just didn't have that punch that that film delivered so when we want to recreate the look and feel of classic films usually tailored to specific subjects um you might want to have color print looks you know that that you know sometimes you want that faded vintage color prints versus color slides and you might want to emulate something like punchy, like Velvia, or maybe it's a portrait. You want to look, uh, emulate uh, Astia or Kodachrome or even Portra. Um, and then there's all the black and white, all the black and white emulsions that we used to, to love. And I mean, you probably shot some of these. I, I certainly did. Plus X, Tri-X. Tri-X was kind of like my go-to film when I shot black and white and learned how to do my own film processing, right? So you kind of got used to these looks for certain situations. Um, and so it applies these looks. And and sometimes when you look at it in digital, it can it can look kind of kind of weird, kind of grungy, kind of flat. And if you just have one image in a series processed that way, um, it kind of stands out as being odd. But where I find they work really well is if you're putting together a compilation of photos, either for a book or a slideshow, or just to you know share online as a gallery, um, then you can get a really nice continuity between your images and they're all processed in a similar way. And you start, they, they start to um, not stick out like a sore thumb quite so much. So it's it's quite interesting and, and I like it for certain kinds of subjects. So there's some examples that I wanna go through because it, it was in the last year that I ran into some scenarios where um, I felt like vintage processing was useful. Um, and so I'm gonna go into Lightroom for this because that's where I have my galleries. And the first, the first one, was on a um, a road trip that I did out to um, Southern Colorado. So I live in Colorado Springs and I go out to uh, to Trinidad and those areas down south of here, south of Pueblo, way out on the east. Um, and there's all this old, you know, 
very old buildings built in the 1800s. They're kind of falling apart. Um, and I had been working, um, doing some homework on famous photographers and came across the work of Stephen Shore. And if you haven't, um, if you're not familiar with his work, he did a lot of larger format um, and 35 millimeter documentary. He was one of the first people to really use 35 millimeter film for street shooting and color film, I should say. And I wanted to get that that flavor and that vibe. So I started playing around with settings, um, including grain and, and color, uh, you know, color tints, things like that to, to give these photos that vintage kind of look like they had been shot on color film, maybe in the in the 70s. So there's all these these images that I have. And then so that was fun. Um, and, you know, it's really fun for things like street shooting, where you've got buildings and stuff and you want to give them a, a vintage flair. But the other thing was, is that just last month uh, or just beginning of this month, actually, I um, I got back from uh, Cuba and in Cuba, everything is super colorful. And I was recently there. And so for these images, what I wanted to do was process them in a unified or sort of unified way depending on the subjects whether it was buildings and architecture or people to give that punch like you'd get with color slide film so i was trying to use settings that mimicked emulsions like velvia or astia or provia sometimes you know those fuji um those fuji films and it's really fun and the nice thing about using uh, settings like this is that um once you've sort of gotten that effect, um, the, the trick is you want to be consistent and replicate it across all of your photos um, and then just make your one-off adjustments as needed. So the key here, and this is the trick, is that um, you have to make adjustments to a lot of components to your image, especially if you're going for vintage looks. So the contrast is going to be different, and that might be the contrast slider, it might be the base profile, or the tone curve, you're going to have different color responses. So for example, think about um, uh, Kodachrome. Kodachrome would really saturate reds and greens more strongly, whereas something like Velvia was a little warmer and had, it gave, it gave a, a lot of punch to different different uh, tone to greens and yellows, okay? Um, so different films have different tonal responses as well as different color responses. And then there's the, the color response in black and white film too. So black and white films all differed in the way they would respond to different colors. So, um, uh, a, a film might have a strong response to reds and yellows and rendering those tones lighter um, than blues and might render blues darker. So every flavor of film was a little bit different in terms of its tonal response, how it handled the color wavelengths coming in. And then also things like film grain. And then once you get beyond the grain, you know, stronger grain effects for, um, uh, you know, higher ISO film or ASA, if you remember those days, um, there could be things that you want to do for special effects like vignettes and borders, and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into these films. Um, and it's a pain to try to adjust those um, individually on every photo every single time. Now, like I mentioned before, there's been film emulation tools for digital photographs since the early days. Like one of the first articles I ever wrote was I was approached to write a review of a product called Alien Skin Exposure, which intended to emulate films and you would use it in, in Photoshop um, on your digital files. This was like 2000 and 2006 it was very early on 
Um, so they've been around forever. People want to make their digital photos look like film. And like I said, early on, that was because we didn't have a lot of great processing tools. And boy, wouldn't it be nice if I could just make my digital files look like the Fuji Velvia that I was shooting um, for landscapes. And wouldn't that be nice to have one click application of this? Um, all of those tools, so things like Alien Skin, and they're still out there, um, some of the NIC products that, that are available, they always operate on a rasterized image. That means when you open them either directly in the editor or through Photoshop, you're, you're taking your raw photo, converting it to usually a TIFF-based form, um, and then working on that. Now that's not a huge deal most of the time, but it does present some challenges, okay? And just keep in mind that none of these software tools are exactly 100% correct, okay? The idea is they get you a close approximation of those looks so that you're gonna have a punchier, more saturated look with something like Velvia and a more toned down look with, with Astia or color print film is gonna be even softer tonality and less clipped, uh, less clipped blacks and, and highlights and things like that. So nobody's perfect out here. They just all attempt to do this. So I looked through all these, these programs and I looked at how they adjusted images and I tried to, to see if I could get that um, to work for me in Lightroom. Now, the biggest problem that you get with these tools, and it doesn't matter which one you're using, is that once you go to that external editor, you're not in that raw space anymore. So that's a big problem. But nobody tells you what the basic starting point is supposed to be. In other words, are you supposed to use default settings? What if you've already adjusted tone, color, and contrast in your image? You can really get some dorked up extreme looking uh, images that just don't look good when you apply these presets from an unknown starting point. And, and that's always been my issue with presets. It's like, you know, it's nice to be able to click something, but if you don't know how you're supposed to adjust your image to start with, it's tough. And I would say most of them, I just assume that they're using something like the Adobe standard profile and, and default settings, but, but it's hard to know. No one ever really documented it. So if you use Lightroom, the idea would be, you can work in your native raw format, apply looks that maybe include base settings like base profile. So they're all going to start off as a standardized look. And then if you want to tweak them, go right ahead. That's really easy to do. And you're in the raw format. And, you know, so like, let's just say, let me give you an example. Let's say you go into a software tool via an external editor, and it applies vignetting, grain, tone curve, color response, all this stuff. You come back, you've now got a, a TIFF image or a PSD, and you can't edit it anymore. Those, those effects all get baked in. You apply, one of a, you apply a preset or you make adjustments in Lightroom. Hey, that's a little strong. Let me just tweak the contrast a little bit. And you can do it on the underlying raw file in a non-destructive way. So if you want to start from scratch and apply a different look, it's very easy to do. You don't have to keep generating multiple uh, TIFF images. So now I want to spend the rest of the time in Lightroom. And mind you, this works as well. It, this works in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, and of course, Camera Raw via Photoshop Bridge, however you might invoke it. That, the only major difference is the user interface, okay? They, they're just slightly different, but the tools are all the same. So I wanna talk about presets versus profiles. And I'm gonna show you this in Lightroom in a second. But just so you know, cause I have to keep myself honest with these bullet points, presets in Lightroom ACR, they give you a way to save stored you save values for a ton of edit it, editing operations, parameters, the color profiles, the exposure, you know, color saturation, the, the 
color sliders, the, the luminance, the curves, grain, vignette, all kinds of stuff. And, um, you know, it's a subject for a different class. Maybe I'll do one um, in, a, in a few weeks here on, on making presets. Um, but but they, they're on the left side of the Lightroom Classic interface. They're in the presets panel on the ACR and Lightroom CC. The thing about presets is most of the time um, you can apply them to just about any image. The, on, the only place where you might might see them not work is if they invoke a raw profile. And then you might see the preset being only semi-compatible, and that's no big deal. The other thing um, with presets is that if they make a lot of adjustments, you've now got to go figure out all what, what just happened to your image from the from the editing panel. Um, the good news is you can make those changes. Those changes are not baked in. But sometimes, like let's say it applied a complex curve. If you're not good with curves, maybe that's a little bit tricky to adjust. Um, but presets can be built with something called the amount slider, which is very cool. I'm going to show you that. So let me jump over to um, Lightroom. So I'm in Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to go into... Um, some files that I have, and we're just going to go into the um, the develop module. So I hit D, and okay. And so you've got in your normal Lightroom develop, you got all your tools on the right hand side here. This is Lightroom Classic, classic of course, and I could go through here and make make all kinds of adjustments. And right now. Nothing has been adjusted. So, so let me show you something that's included with Lightroom, and you may or may not like them or, or, or whatever, but they're, they're there and they're free, so it's not a bad thing. They have these presets, and I've only necked mine down to just a small subset uh, where they have these things called style presets, and they have one called vintage, and they're just, they're not described very well. There's vintage one, two, three, four, five, whatever, okay? So you can use these. I kind of like vintage four is one that works kind of nice. But you can see you get different color toning. And so if I click one of these presets and apply it, look over here on the right-hand side, all these little eyeballs that popped up. This tells me that this preset, it's made adjustments to the whites, the blacks, the saturation, the tone curve. It's made color mixer adjustments, color grading adjustments, as well as it's made some effects adjustments. So to get this back to where you were starting from, you can either go through and adjust these individually, or you can just do a reset. The other thing that's cool about presets though, is that there is, for many presets, there will be an amount slider at the top, or sometimes it'll be right on the preset. Like if you're using Lightroom CC or ACR, you'll just see a slider bar. And what you can do is you can dial that preset down or make it stronger. And it's just, it's doing a cumulative effect across all of those sliders that just moved. So that that's something that can be kind of interesting. Okay. Now these are included with Lightroom and you can you can turn them on and off by just going to your preset manager here and say manage presets and just choose the ones that you want because there's a whole bunch of them. So right now, just to keep it clean, I've only selected some of these, but they've got black and white portrait presets, all kinds of stuff that are included. Okay, so I'm going to reset this now. And now I want to talk briefly about profiles. So presets are a set of adjustments. So it can be one or, or a dozen different adjustments, but profiles are a little different. They're under the hood and, and um, you may have seen them and they're located in the profile browser in Lightroom. And that's in the basic panel or the adjustments panel if you're in ACR. And there's a little thing where it's, it'll say profile. I'll show you this in a second. And you get this drop down menu and you can browse through either a list or little thumbnails of all these different browsers. And you may have heard of them because you, you might see the one called Adobe Color or Adobe Monochrome or Camera Standard or these profiles, right? Well, there's two kinds of profiles that Lightroom supports now. There's the ones that are specific to your camera called DCP profiles. And then there's creative or XMP profiles. And what's the difference? DCP profiles are 
very specific and they only work with a particular camera model. So you'll have a profile, even though it says Adobe Color or Adobe Standard, it'll be Adobe Standard for a Nikon Z8 or for a Fujifilm you know, X-T5. Those are specific to that camera. And those profiles only show up when that raw file from that particular camera is loaded. So if I load a Fuji file, I might see Lightroom's got profiles that emulate the Fuji uh, in-camera looks. I won't see those in-camera looks when I load a Nikon file or an, or an Olympus file into Lightroom, okay? You only get those. But then there's this other set of profiles that exist. Um, they've been around for a few years, and these are XMP, and they're, you can call them creative profiles. And XMP profiles are interesting because while they will refer to a base profile, an underlying profile, which is usually Adobe Standard, you can apply them to raw files from any camera. You can also apply them to JPEGs or TIFFs or other image formats. And you can get creative with those, with those profiles. They can include creative color information and curves and things like that, um, including color lookup tables, which is what cinema, uh, cinematographers use to color tone uh, their their videos okay so you've all seen a movie or you've watched game of thrones where everything is blue um it's really not blue out there um, in these sci-fi films it's they're using a lookup table to apply this particular um kind of uh, color mapping um they also can utilize an amount slider so let me show you those back in lightroom so if we go into lightroom and we just open up the basic panel. The standard default for any image when you're using, unless you've changed it, is Adobe Color. And if I go into my profile browser, you'll see Adobe Raw Profiles. So these are the traditional ones. They work with, any, with, with the camera. And Adobe has built these for every camera. So every time you get that, that announcement um, in, you know, that that uh, notification that Camera Raw or Lightroom has been a, updated to support new camera models. What they're talking about is they've added the, the necessary profiles and sometimes um, lens corrections for those cameras. And then you'll see a, 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 a panel called Camera Matching. And so these are the ones that come out of your cameras. So this was an OM1 uh, file, so it has Olympus portrait or Olympus vivid or you know these, these are the ones that you might see if you were shooting JPEG in your camera and you changed it to landscape mode or something like that. But then there's also a bunch of things called artistic and black and white and modern and vintage and these are included with Lightroom and they get you sort of these same kind of film looks okay the same kind of look but you're doing it via specific color modification and tone modification and again there's an amount slider here so you can dial it up or dial it down and then when you're done what's nice is that nothing here has been modified so if you want to go in and play around with your own grain presets or your own curves adjustments or you know make adjustments you start from zero here you're not starting from a curve there are benefits and drawbacks to both both operations okay so where does this mean what does this mean for for me you know what have i been doing for the last several months um to to work on on my my photos well um i had started with creating a huge number of specific profiles um vintage ones or or um I call them vintage profiles, and they they range from the weird, you know, the very cool color blue toned Game of Thrones type of stuff, faded, weird color tones, you know, stuff you might see with really old film stocks or things that have gotten messed up over the years, and you can see how the blacks kind of get clipped. So I made thirty seven of these, and they're all in this group, which I came up with the clever name of using my initials, calling vintage profiles. 
And those are something that I can just go back to if I ever want to um, and, and use. I also then spent the last several months looking through those other software tools that I have and building an, a set of uh, 27 film presets that don't use these profiles. The profiles are separate. And I built those, and I'll just load them in here. Black and white color, print color slide, film grain, toning, and vignette. Okay, so here they are with their clever names. But these I went back and looked at different photos using different presets from other tools across different, different looks to try to mimic that using Lightroom controls so that I could do it directly here on my raw files. So for example, let me just start with the, the obvious one, the color slides. Um, you got my, my attempt at, at uh, Astia Kodachrome. And you see if I go Velvia, it's stronger. And then there's the amount slider and I can you know really make it punchy if I want. And like I said, nothing's getting changed here, but it is applying tone curves. It, it, they are applying color balance and you can always reset those if you don't like it you can always reset it okay um but one cool thing is that while the linear curve has been adjusted you can still and if you came to my curves workshop you can still use the parametric curve slider to adjust your image if you want to so if you want that punchy look it might apply grain it'll apply grain at different amounts and if you want to then modify these there's some other presets that I've included. So if you want to just really make the grain chunky, you can do that. Get heavy grain, extra heavy grain. Okay. So you can you can apply these presets on top of, and it will change a subset of the settings over here on the right. And you can turn the grain off. Okay. So that's one. I've also built color... Um, and black and white print film. So let's start with um, let's start with some uh, color print option here. Close my slide film. Okay, you may have heard of these before. They they correspond to certain brands of of film, and each one is similar. They differ mostly in their grain and how they kind of render the tones and color. So if you like that, you know, uh, superior 400, like you shot prints, you get here and you notice it applies a grain, it applies a particular look, you want to dial it down, okay, I'll just dial it down, you want to really crank it up, you can crank it up. And when you use this amount slider, it's punching up all of the parameters that are adjusted, including the tone curve, the grain, everything. It does it in a unified sort of coordinated manner. And if you want to just change one parameter, you just go into the other preset and um, say, oh, I just really want just medium grain look. Okay, fine. I've also got black and white film presets. So let's find one of those. You may have heard of some of these because these attempted to, to, um, to um, get that same look. So you got them, I have them broken down by ISO 50, 100. So here's our friend, you know, kind of looks like Tri-X. It has that same response curve here. And what I did with these, that's a little bit different than um, what you might get if you were just doing black and white, is I've kept the base profile to be Adobe Neutral, which is a very low contrast profile, and it kept the color in Involved. So one of the things you could do if you wanted to is um, you could come in and do some selective colorization on top of the black and white. So for example, if I just go to the color mixer, go to my saturation panel and say, yeah, let's just add a little blue. Okay. The color is there. Unlike using the Adobe monochrome profile, which was a stronger contrast, I didn't like it. So you can, you can fool around with these if you, if you really want to. You can use the targeted adjustment tool or whatever. And again, there's grain and all kinds of other things that are that are applied here. I've also added in just to, 
to make it additive some toning presets so hey you want to do a sepia tone hey boom just click sepia um and it works and the cool thing about the sepia i just like this is if we go back and come back to let's say this image the color one where i did i can use that sepia and it just kind of warms it up or if you want a more faded look i have this preset for yellowed and faded like you might get with older print film or older slide film um and there's that weird you know cyanotype kind of look but it it can work with color or monochrome images so these presets are kind of modular you can start with a base film you can tweak it you can add grain and then lastly i've got it set up to add vignettes so i've got got a couple of different vignettes um i'll, I'll show you a few that i like you know some of these are just strong and again if, if they're too strong you just dial it down with the amount slider so this is a strong corner vignette a more subtle vignette where you're just slightly darkening the corners. You just want a little bit. But I did another one, and you and, and to, to do this one, it, you'll notice this one says mask. Um, this is the, it works better on monochrome, but this is the Ansel Adams burn the edges masks. And when you burn the edges, the corners are a little bit darker than, than the, um, the the edges themselves because they're overlapping so it mimics the look i'll go back to my um black and white image let's put this mask on this burn it burn edges and we can dial it up and you can see how the corners darken so this was this mimics um the traditional darkroom burn edges technique where you would take a card cover up the entire image except for that one edge and because the corners overlapped as you were doing the burning the corners themselves would would be darker than if you had just done say a, a cutout and 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 made it a, a unified um a vignette and then there's some that look like frames so i got a black frame a white frame you can you can do this and that's that's kind of fun so i've spent several months building this getting it all you know, dialed in to, to have these looks and, and they do have reset buttons. If you don't like it, you can just go back and reset the toning and the, the grain and whatnot. Okay. So I've done this. I've spent, like I said, I, I, I started this project two years ago and, and really finished it up in the last uh, three months since the end of the year. Um, and so I've made these available now on my website i have yet to announce them formally you're the first people to know about these um my pack of lightroom uh slash acr presets and profiles there are 47 total presets including the 27 film emulations that i showed you all the black and white the color uh print the color slide as well as those 37 xmp creative profiles if you're into experimenting um, and you want to do your own own looks with those um, you can you can get those um, from my website now and i'm offering them as an introductory special with uh, five dollars off so if you go over to my website somewhere i can find my website it is there now and here's the list of all the films that you get. And you can just download this as a zip file. Now, how do you use them? If you want to use these, if you, if you do choose to get them, it's real simple. There's a zip file that you'll get and you unzip it. And um, let me see if I can, uh, can find that uh, file. Let's see. Okay, you're going to unzip that, and it's going to look something like this. It's a zip of zips, okay? There's the installation instructions, which is a PDF, and then there's all these zip files. The, key, the cool thing here is if you're use, when, you, when you're using these, um, you don't need to unzip these subfiles. Lightroom, these contain all the different presets in, in, and profiles, but Lightroom and ACR can load them directly from the zip. So what do you do? You go to Lightroom, let's say, and you just choose File, uh, Import, Develop Profiles and Presets, and this is in, in the instructions. And when you do that, 
you just select the ones or all of them that you want and click import. Easy peasy. And with Lightroom, you can do all of them at the same time. With ACR, don't ask me why, you can only do one at a time, but they read the zip file. So you don't even need to unzip those. You just load them direct and then it loads the whole slew of everything in. And then with Lightroom, you just need to restart it in order to use the profiles. The presets will load in automatically. Again, I don't, I don't build, I don't know why people do this. So um, let me uh, get out of this for a second and come back to the, the live. And I'm going to open it up for, for questions. So if you've got a question, you want to type it in the window. Um, or if you'd like to unmute themselves or unmute yourself, I would be happy to take your questions at this time. And I'll send the link out in the chat window to um, that web page where you can where you can um, get this. And so there's a link that just popped up in your chat, and if you click the promo code, it's vintage five. All right. Who's got questions? Anybody out there? Um, it's not hard to do, but it, a lot of work goes into making stuff like this. But the whole idea is that your life just got a lot easier if the, these are looks that are uh, things that you like, because now you can just click a button and you can generate this look. And what I really like about the way that these are implemented is that you can still tweak the look. You don't have to stay with the same exact look every time. And if you wanted to maybe tweak it and create your own preset that you save from that, it's something you could do. It's, it's, there's there's um, nothing wrong with that. Um, and thanks again for attending. Um, I appreciate it. And um, you know where to find me online. And I'll see you soon.